Hey, it's Biddy Penny. Welcome back to my channel. Today is round two with a cherry box. This is the April 2021 box from a cherry on top. And I have already used this card kit to make 16 mini slim lines with Call Me Crafty Owl's sheet load of cards this month. These are my scraps. Now the solid purple and green paper were from my stash. These are the leftovers from the recipe and the way I cut it. And I am just gonna set this out on my mat, measure it up, see what I'm working with. I decided to cut these down to four and a quarter by eight and a half. They're already at eight and a half, so that was easy. And that way I have four and a quarter by four and a quarter card bases once they're folded. And I love working with square cards. And these are great because they'll fit in an A2 envelope. So I'm not going to make envelopes, especially for them. I, I don't have any in stock. I'm just putting these in an A2 envelope and it'll all be good. All right. So first things first, I have all these scraps and I was looking at them, seeing how I might use them. And well, I just decided to pull out more paper. So I pulled out one of each design. So this paper pad is called Watercolor Florals. It's from Prima. And one of the things I really love about subscription boxes is when their product can be sold and bought individually. I understand the exclusive appeal for the companies, but as a customer, I like to be able to buy either bits and pieces, or if I just love the box, I know I can restock on things that I truly loved if I wanted to. And I know some card kits are just priced out of people's, you know, budget. And so this way, if maybe they just wanted the paper pad and the ephemera, they could do that. And I really appreciate that as a customer. All right, so I'm going to make eight cards with you here. And then there will be one bonus card that I made that you'll see at the end of the video when I share all the cards. So I'm using scraps and just kind of creating layers. And none of these cards were planned at all. This is just fly by the seat of my pants crafting, which is my favorite way to work. And luckily, you guys seem to enjoy that because I seldom plan out a design to share with you. <laughs> I just grab my materials, turn on the camera, and we see what happens. I begin getting a lot of questions about my glue. I want to tell you all, I have tried many, many brands, and this is definitely my favorite. It's the Barely Art Glue. I would say that it's extremely close to art glitter glue, but I think it has less water. It doesn't show all the bumps and lines on the card bases. So it holds remarkably. So all the roses or the flowers I'm putting on these cards today, I glued on with this glue. And once it's dried, they're not going anywhere. It's really good stuff. I'm using some packaging today, like this piece is beautiful, hard, very sturdy. Uh, it's almost like poster board is about the weight of it, this packaging, and it's double-sided gorgeousness. So I'm gonna use it on my cards. I think it's so cool when companies make their packaging this beautiful, so it's all consumable, and then we end up throwing very little away. I just love that. So yeah, I am layering things up. No big surprise. You guys know my style by now. <laughs> and I really love roughing up the edges of paper with my scissors like I did on this. In fact, you'll see that a lot in this video. Um, it just adds dimension to the paper so you can glue it flat down like I'm doing here, but it looks like it's popped up. You know, it just adds such a cool texture and dimension to the card, but yet it's still flat. So flat, not fat for the mailbox. All right, card number two. 
And for this one, of course, like I said before, we're going to see a lot of this in this video. I do find that the thicker the blade on your scissors, the better results you'll get. If you use a really fine blade, um, it'll tend to cut and tear your page more. If that's what you're going for, use a thin blade. <laughs> All right, I wanted to put one of these flowers on there and I just go for this aqua one, but I really like that blue one as I go back and as I'm editing with you guys now. I decided I was gonna use all of these today and there's some more packaging I'll be using. So these are like metal pieces and they're floral, goes perfectly. It's a different company. It's, it's not a Prima product. Or maybe it is. <laughs> it is. I don't know. I'm not a salesman. <laughs> I'm a crafter. <laughs> oh, but I'm sure you can find all of this stuff at a cherry on top. If you're looking for it. And if you're wondering what everything's named, and I don't name it for you, and I don't link everything because that just doesn't sound fun to me, you can go on to a cherry on top. You could look at their April box and they'll probably list everything there for you. Sorry, I do some leg work, but I'm mainly just a crafter, you guys. <laughs> all right, so I'm laying down all my layers here. You will see me use that frame I just tossed out of the way. That is going to be the bonus card at the end. All right. I got a lot of positive response. You guys seem to really love this paper pack, which just made me happy because I loved it too. This is the kind of stuff I like to use for sure. I love Prima, but I just love florals. And so I was so happy you guys really enjoyed my first take with this box on the sheet load of cards. That was such a fun session, and this one was too. Footloose and fancy free, just doing whatever I wanted. Sorry, I thought I had edited this part out. I guess not. We're going to have to be patient with the foam dots. I know a couple of people picked up this collection since my last video, so I'm hoping by working with this box again, it'll give you even more inspiration of, of ways you can use these papers. I really loved this beat bench scene. My husband, actually, I just got back from going to plant nurseries with him. His nickname is Dr. Shrub. He has been bitten by the uh, planting bug and gardening bug, and he has been planting up our yard for like the last two years, and it is slowly starting to look like this picture. Our goal is to just get it lush and beautiful, and so we can sit back and just watch the flowers grow and admire all their beauty. So this um, picture makes me think of home, and I like that. I like having beautiful flowers to look at. Our kids said we're turning it into a jungle. <laughs> we live in Texas, and my daughter is worried about monkeys coming to live in our jungle. It's totally amusing. Okay, so again, I'm just layering pieces together. I did find that foam dots were the best way for me to adhere these metal pieces down. I had tried glue dots and that wasn't terribly successful. I think you could also use a hot glue gun, but I don't iron. Um, I'm careful when I'm baking and I bring out my hot glue gun rarely because I always tend to burn myself. 
I don't know what it is. So I am embossed that neutral tan piece or ivory piece of paper. And I just think that's so beautiful. I love embossing. It's got to be like, you know, a lot of people talk about what was it that got you hooked on card making? And for me, it was my die cut machine with embossing folders. I know a lot of people like heat embossing is the thing that draws them in and, um, you know, they get hooked. But for me, it was actually dry embossing with embossing folders. And my love for it has only grown. I am so stoked that companies are finally making slimline embossing folders. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited about that. I don't have any yet. I'm on a spending freeze and I found out about them during my spending freeze. But that gives me time to really look around, check different patterns. It gives more people time to release some. <laughs> and then when I'm ready and the spending freeze is over, I can have my little wish list, which I've been is what I've been doing instead of buying things. I'm just putting them on a list. And that list is still not too long. I'm really proud of myself. So I did this series early on in my channel. And while I'm just sitting here talking, I figure I'll ask you guys about it. So it was called Check Your Stash. And it was just about like when I see a stamp set and I'm like, ooh, it's cute and I want it, but I kind of already have something like it. I used to do this thing where I'd be like, okay, this is what I want, but this is what I have. And I would try to rework the stamp sets I had to get me past the urge to buy the, the new one. And so I did a couple of videos like that. They're old, they're back on my channel, but I was thinking of bringing that series back. So let me know in the comments down below, is that something you would be interested in? Because since I've been on my spending freeze, I've certainly found some things that I wanted to buy, but I was like, I'm sure I could do a check your stash and, and get myself past this urge. So yeah. All right, I used this impasto paint and they do suggest using it like this with a plastic spatula or palette knife. And I'm just kind of messing around, uh, spreading this on paper, nothing terribly scientific or anything. I'm going to bring it up, show y'all. I didn't put a real thick layer on there, but then I went back over the top of it and added that stroke. And I, that's what I like. I really like it. It takes a while to dry. Okay, so what I would suggest is that you do however many of these you want to do. 10, 15, that's 10 is usually about the maximum that I do of any one design. But I would do a handful, however many you want, leave it overnight, come back to it. Because they don't, they suggest that you don't use your heat tool to dry it, which I totally did because it can crack just it's got a heavyweight gel in it and so um, forcing it to dry is not what they recommend all right so some of these pieces had a lot of holes in them and i used to be a jewelry maker so i immediately thought of stringing or pulling this uh, silk thread through the holes so i'm kind of stringing this onto my card front like a piece of jewelry and I am using a sari silk here just in case you're curious I get my sari silk on Etsy and I do believe it's ethically um, sourced I didn't know that it could be unethically sourced but like most things it can be so I was pleased to find out that mine was after the fact, after I had bought it. <laughs> and then I'm bringing in this scrap piece of paper. So I believe 
my square is a four by four and then this little piece is like three and three quarters by two inches or something like that just to give you an idea of the size I know you guys are wanting more measurements and I'm going to be trying to improve that aspect I just I don't think in terms of measurements I just think in terms of design if you will and a lot of times I'm using scraps or random pieces and so I just I rarely use sketches and things like that so I don't think of my card design in that way so of course I do measure things but I just I'm gonna have to work on it and I am I'm, I'm trying <laughs> All right, so for this piece, again, my goal is to use up these metal pieces. And with the cards today, I was thinking that, you know, by making eight of them, they would make a nice set of cards. And so I made four that had patterned paper fronts with all the layering like you saw. And then I made four like these that had the embossed fronts the embossed white cardstock as the base. And I just thought these would make a really nice set of cards for someone. I think I'm gonna give it to a family member for Mother's Day, something like that. Give them a nice set of note cards that they can use and send. Of course, some they'll have to be hand delivered or sent in a package since they have those roses on them. I am also gearing up. I am like ready to return to the farmer's market. I might have mentioned this previously, but I used to do well um, selling my cards and journals at a market. And I enjoyed it just hearing the general public's thoughts about my creations. And then, of course, um, people buying up my stuff so it's not stored in boxes in my room <laughs> I donate a lot I give tons away but then I still have a lot left over and I do like to sell them um so I I kind of want to get back into that and things are opening up more and once I get vaccinated I think I'm going to rejoin the farmer's market and sell my stuff to the public. I'm getting excited about that. I don't know how that will affect my YouTube channel. Like, I'll probably just be doing more mass makes and hopefully that will be something you guys enjoy. I'll be busting my stash because I'll have to be making a lot for the farmer's market. Um, so anyways, I really found that the foam tape helped secure like this leaf on here. And then I used the Sari Silk, and now I'm going to use a Tim Holtz Sentiment. I kind of stuck it down, and then I was like, yeah, I should probably glue it. Let's make things as secure as possible. And there is that lovely card. I was checking this one. It's definitely still wet. All right, I don't think it gets any easier than this, really. I am just using scrap paper again and have that embossed white paper, and then I'm going to use three leaves. This is just a very simple, clean and simple card. These are so fun to make, clean and simple sometimes. The way I work is definitely like flowish. Um, I just go with the flow and it's, it's what I enjoy. So of course, here I am scuffing up the edges. Gotta add that interest. So I'd be curious to know if any of you guys 
um, sell your makes in a public place at all, like maybe in gift shops or boutiques or anywhere? I would love to know that. Um, I put a few on my Etsy page, uh, but I mainly sell like D stash items and journals through my Etsy page. All right, so here's where I am heating up that paint, which is not advised. And the way I learned that was from watching a Cherry on Top's videos. So if you guys didn't know it, they have a YouTube channel and they have really cool, just short, like five, 10 minute videos that they demonstrate different products and how to use them. And so one of their videos this month has been about this paint and you know, that's where I learned, okay, it can crack. You probably don't want to heat it with your heat tool. Of course I caught that after I made this card, but Hey, it's all good. So I did buy a bottle of white impasto paint. It may be impasto. I, I don't know. But I bought a bottle of this paint in white because I figured I can always color it any color I want with my acrylic paint. So that would be the most versatile. I'm excited to have it in my stash. The last time I checked a cherry on top, they were sold out of the white. I don't know currently if they are or not. But um, I found mine on scrapbook.com. So that would be another place you could check. All right, so I just used up my scraps. That's what I do. And I am going to stick this leaf in there. This was the last one, so I used all of those up, which was my goal. And then I was feeling like adding a flower, and then I was like, okay, the right side of this card has got everything going on, but something's missing. <laughs> so I, um, used up my spool of metallic thread last month and I have a new one. This one I picked up from Walmart. It was a couple of dollars and I actually really like this one more than the one I had before because it's got that elasticity to it and the one I had before was a very coarse, very stiff thread and I like this one better. I'm excited. So I'm just going to wrap this around a number of times. What number? I don't know till I was done and um, tape it down on the back and it's funny this one subtle detail balanced the whole equation for me it made the card complete for me so that might be something you give a try sometime I love adding thread to my card And that's the last one I'm making for you guys on camera today. So here's the first one. And as usual, my cards start off simple. It's like my warm up. These are my warm up cards. And then as I go, I start adding more layers, get the blood flowing. Here's my frame one. It was, it's really sweet. And I'm showing you those flowers aren't budging with that liquid glue because it's had already started to dry. My clean and simple. I hope you guys enjoyed this card making session and all my chit chat. I love hanging out with you guys in the comments section. I know I'm not always 100% prompt, but I have to tackle those at the end of my day. So that's why. But this is everything that I have left over. <laughs> I don't know if I'll make another video, but I do plan on using up a lot of these materials 
I think the next thing I'm going to make is a wall, uh, a wall hanging a picture on canvas. And then I'll just add some of the stuff to my stash and it's no big deal. I have two sheets of each piece of paper left. So what, that makes 12 sheets of paper out of 30. Pretty good. All right. Take care. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.